Okay, so we're live with uh, our Hangout for the NPF 14 LMD project uh, and we have as our guest the presenter this morning all the way from Otago Polytechnic, uh, Matt Thompson and Matt is one of the carpentry lecturers there and I'm going to hand it over to Matt, he's going to give us his presentation on what he's been doing with mobile and social media with his students uh, and then we'll open up to questions or Matt might you know, uh, actually ask if there's any questions as he goes. So I'm going to hand it over to Matt now, thanks Matt. Okay, thanks for that, Tom. Yeah, I've been uh, teaching uh, carpentry down here for about 10 years, and over the last five years, um, using ePortfolios with our students to, um, well, it's mostly for assessment, but it's recording the work that they do, and then um, using that as an assessment for, um, for part of the course. Now, uh, the course we teach is uh, 40 weeks long. It, um, it involves a little bit of work experience, but most of the time the students are here, it's face-to-face -face learning. And we do a little bit of theory, but most of the uh, teaching we do is in the practical situation. Um, so it's about 40% of that work. We, like 40% of the whole course would be outside building a house. We do that on campus, much like all the other polytechs um, within New Zealand that teach a carpentry course. Now, while they're out uh, building the house, we found that um, because it's a theory only course, the I guess what the practical situation does is it leaves itself open to uh, being used for assessment. So um, we find that the best way for them to record what they've learned is by taking photographs and in some cases annotating them or using those photographs um, just to record their learning and it's been a really successful thing for the last five years. Um, so. In 2014, and in conjunction with this project and another one that I was, another research paper I was doing with Bronwyn Hegarty and at Otago Polytech here, we decided to um, go with that bring your own device. Um, we, we tried other things before and let the students actually record what they're doing on their devices and going from a desktop based ePortfolio to a mobile ePortfolio um, using a multitude of platforms. Yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Smile and nod if you can. Okay. So what I was going to do here was uh, share a, a screen with you. I've just got a, a, a few slides to um, to show. And can you see that okay? Yeah, that's working fine. Yep, we can see the slides, Matt. Okay. Right, yeah, so... Um, I just I started off with um, trying to work out what students would like to use to, to share their ePortfolio with um, with me and with the other class members, so that was important. So we we started with those three um, uh, different apps there, which it was important they had to be uh, platform agnostic and something that was easy to use, and, and of course Facebook being, I guess, something that they're all quite common with. So that's what we... Um, that's what we started with, um, and it was based on an action research where each time I introduced one of those um, platforms to use, which I think we started with Facebook, uh, there was a lot of reflection that had to be done by the students and me afterwards uh, to work out where we'd gone wrong, what what we could do for the next time better, and, and, and plan and so forth. So the, the first one was uh, simple, it was only a one day exercise using Facebook and I, I used Facebook as an introduction because I knew they could all um, use it. Um, once we'd used Facebook, it seemed to start the ball rolling and um, I suppose rightly or wrongly I lost control of it at some stages where they decided to use um, their own platform or, or go w with their own kind of feeling, so, so that worked quite well. So at no stage was I in control, it was very much learner centred, so letting them take control and, and go. Um, the Facebook was good, positive feedback was very good with the students, they, they enjoyed recording their, their work um, for assessment on Facebook. Completion rates were good, never had them that good before for those particular subjects. 
It had, did have other uses. Um, I did you know, manage to cancel class on a snow day using um, using Facebook. Um, <clears throat> some of the other things that happened on Facebook, which I didn't like, was suddenly you're, and I, I, I know you can change the settings, but I didn't really want to become friends of theirs. Um, so you see some of the hijinks they get up, got up to in the weekend. So um, yeah, but that was that was pretty good. The next one was Evernote. Um, I've had I've been a, a user of Evernote for a few years, and I really like it as far as an ePortfolio. It well, worked really well. And what we did with um, with Evernote was, I, in each in each one of these cases, I gave them a subject um, that they had to photograph. Uh, with Evernote, I think maybe up to eight different photographs. So they had to record their learning on. Imagine a house that they've got a building paper around the house. Um, they had to put some waterproofing on, they had to fix weatherboards on, and there's a whole lot of information about the way you fix the weatherboard, the height to put it at, and, and so forth. So it, there was a whole lot of things that went on and on. It went, it went quite well. Um, one of the things that didn't work out so well was the fact that there was no peer marking uh, with Evernote. They tended not to share it with each other. With Facebook, they did share everything with each other. and it, <clears throat> yeah, that was one that didn't work out so well. Um, also, doing I did quite a lot of reading about introducing mobile learning and, and e-learning into classes, and the same lesson had been learned by lots of other lecturers where you really needed to spend time yourself to learn how to, to use that particular uh, tool really, really well, and then give the students time to practice using that tool. Just on however, however way they wanted to do it, uh, and then, and then that gave them a little bit of confidence. So when it actually came time to, to deliver all their work, it was um, it was a little bit easier. Um, the next one we used was Google Plus, and Google Plus was a favourite of mine. I've been using that for um, longer than anything. Um, socially, it's quite good. It's you know I like the way Google's all linked up to it, to all the YouTube and everything, but the students didn't like it after using the first two, so that didn't work out so well. Um, the community was good on, on Google+, and we used it for about seven weeks as a class. Um, yeah, what, one of the, I guess the most important thing with Google+, was the results. They, they found it too clunky to use. Now, um, if you're a, a lecturer and you've used Google+, and you probably find it quite easy, but most of your um, input and, and, and social interaction with it might be through a desktop computer. You know, I was asking my students to use their mobile devices on this, and if you, if, you know, if you open it up on your phone, you find you've only got a few functions, and it's a wee bit harder to find all the other functions. So, yeah, m maybe maybe not the best. Um, so yeah, the overall experience wasn't wasn't as positive as, as the other ones. The next one was um, they got to choose whatever they liked um, to continue on. And by this stage, you've got students who have um, well, they're quite familiar with their own devices, and they're familiar with uh, the apps we've been using, and they'd started to explore. So <clears throat> I um, I let them use them and. Facebook and Google Plus and Evernote, so they could repeatedly use them. I said to them they could use one called Notability, which um, is probably the best one of all, but it cost them two dollars fifty nine, which might seem like chicken feed to you, but um, that I mean, some people complain about anything. Tumblr, the one student wanted to use Tumblr, which was quite good, and then Google Docs, uh, which was yeah, that was quite a positive outcome as well. So that was quite good. Um, so here's a result sheet, and what the result sheet does is it, it, each column with the number 12 written in it is a, a, a list of subjects which a student has had uh, ticked off. So if they've got a 12, it, it just means they've passed that. Um, and so there's only 16 students in that class. Now the, the, the subjects on the left are subjects which, which directly relate to, to um, carpentry. And what the colours indicate are what um, app that they actually used um, to record their learning for this ePortfolio. Now the green was Evernote, and 
in, in the middle of the screen, there's a um, there's a row that says exterior cladding, and that was the compulsory one that they were all supposed to use Evernote for. Um, blue being uh, Facebook and red being Google Plus, and then the the yellow ones were just whatever you decided to do, and I, it created quite a lot of work for me, which you know I didn't mind doing, but just to monitor uh, everyone's work and what they were doing and, and how they were doing it. And in each case, when they'd submit something, so they'd be submitting um, a series of photographs of their work at, at the Polytech um, or, or on work experience with an employer, then they would uh, send it to me and I'd have to mark it. And one of the things that suddenly changed, which we'd never done before at the Polytech, was they were doing this work at night, like homework, but they were doing it as a volunteer. So that would yeah, that was a little bit different, which meant I had to do a little bit of homework because they wanted feedback at seven o'clock at night. So I had to, uh, yeah, I had to work a little bit harder there. So the, there's some results there. They, yeah, they liked their learning. It did create time. We we ended up having um, some Friday mornings off where otherwise they'd be um, working through theory classes. And with those Friday mornings off, so the some of the sharper students, they just took off and and went and did their own thing for the day. Um, and some of the other guys in, in that kind of bottom 25%, they spent more time with me in the classroom doing one-on-one uh, -on -one time so I could give them extra tuition to help them through some of their um, assessment work. So that work, that work actually went really well. Um, they really enjoyed using mobile devices. Uh, we made it, well, I made it as simple as I could for them to use. Um, the ePortfolio was something that all the staff here are familiar with. But using yeah, using these apps was something a little bit different. So it was only it was only my class that did it, um, and, and hopefully by next year other people might have adopted that that practice. Um, yeah. So in, in conclusion, from from sorry this short presentation, the spend lots of time learning it. Um, have you yeah, don't try and be in too much control. And, and expect the unexpected, and you've just got to roll with that. Um, I used uh, Bronwyn Hegarty down here, who was my mentor through this. Um, she was really good to help me look at results and, and find the find what they really meant, and that's what I'm trying to write up for my project now. If anyone wants to do it for me, it'd be great. The Evernote was at that stage looking good for the future, and that's what I'm using this year with my um, with my carpentry class, and um, I guess the, the main thing is is let the students decide for what's best for them, purely being learner-centred. Uh, it's not always the easiest thing for um, for the staff member, but yeah. Okay, so that's, um, I'll stop it there. So uh, who's got some questions? Or... Hey, well, thanks, Matt, for that um, great presentation and all the time you, you put into it. And it's really cool to see the stuff that you've done. That's, that's really exciting. Um, so yeah, let's let's open up to questions. And we definitely have some people watching live who've not connected. Some people are having a little bit of problems connecting, but um, hopefully they can send you their questions later if they can't join right now. There's there's a couple in the chat there as well, Matt. If you click on the chat on the side. Um, yep. Oh, there we go. All right. Sorry, I'm late. Tom, good to see you, Catherine. Uh, question: about What were some of the negatives for Google Plus? Um, okay, so Google, yeah, Google Plus, I, I really liked it, and and it worked really well for me. But they found it um, a bit clunky, and they they <coughs> we, we do have a um, a big Wi-Fi problem in in the block I'm in. And what they found was they would upload photographs, and they would do a whole series and do a lot of work, and sometimes something to do with their mobile device and and actually being loaded up onto the maybe the Google page. Um, uh, they that was a, a probably half the class that was a really common complaint. You know, mm -hmm. oh I've done all this work and it didn't work. And that was it was it really um, hard for me to take because I felt mildly responsible for all this work that they'd done and then suddenly it became kind of useless. So that was um, that was probably the main the main negative of Google Plus. Okay, thanks. Um, so a lot of that another question of there from Tom. Did all the students own mobile devices? Uh, all but one. Wow. So we had 
in, in the class of, of 18, uh, sorry, 16 students, uh, one guy went and bought himself a mobile device, not for the project, but um, I mean, he was 18 or 19, so he probably needed one anyway. Uh, but they, yes, they all did have a mobile device by the end of um, probably about this time last year, so a quarter of the way through the course. Cool, and I think my, my other question there, Matt, was um, you were sort of mentioning the variety of platforms that you've tried and, and the fact that there's probably quite a bit of uh, work checking all the different platforms out. Have you tried using, say, a curation tool via hashtags or a, a platform that, that draws those multiple uh, platforms together to make that sort of more automatic for you? No, I didn't. I didn't try anything like that. Um, I suppose I'm finding out myself exactly what I can do at, at, at the moment. Well, so what kind of platform would do that? Um, well, there's, there's a few freebie options. We've, we use a few in the, uh, the project. Um, and they, they generally work via hashtag. So if you define a hashtag for the course, so it could be hash, you know, OPIT carpentry or whatever you want. You want to keep it relatively small. Uh, and um, then if you do a Google Plus post, you do a Twitter post, you do a Vine video, uh, you know, a YouTube video, and the students put that hashtag into the title of whatever social media it is, then you can use these talk tools to pull that content in via hashtag search. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, and a lot of them are, are free. Some of them have, you know, free for a certain amount of tools or a certain amount of content and then a paid version after that. But oops, just muted myself by mistake. Uh, have a look at some of the links that we've got on the NPF 14 there because we're using a couple of curation tools there. Right. So any any other questions for Matt? There's there's one here from um, Sam Ann, who he's from Otago Polytech. Um, about uh, you know did you encourage discussion with the students? And we had, yeah, we did have a lot of talk during, um, we used to try and introduce them on a Thursday uh, to, to the students and talk about uh, what, would, what would work well um, and how they'd work. And within that discussion, and we do it live, so you imagine uh, <coughs> in a carpentry workshop I'd give all the students a little netbook and I'd get them to log on and, and, and kind of introduce it. And then they'd talk themselves as to how, they, how they'd provide the evidence. With, with, with the students, we, we'd let them, um, uh, we, we'd give them a list of things that they had to photograph and record for, for each one of those subjects. Um, and it worked quite well because they'd say, oh, I could do a YouTube video and just walk around and, and take a video or something like that. And that seemed to work quite well. So, but yeah, a lot of discussion with the, with the students. Okay, and there's a question via uh, Mr. Messaging from Ray who's had problems actually getting in live, but his question is, what was the most common device the students owned? Um, I think nearly all of them had um, either an iPhone, um, may, maybe half had an iPhone, and um, a quarter had uh, Samsung, well, I, think, I guess Android devices. All really, really good ones too. Um, you know, money doesn't seem to be an object. They turn up from school with really good devices. Typically, they'd have a crack screen, uh, which I never worked out. I haven't never had a crack on any of my screens. But, um, yeah, iPhone would be the most popular. So, some of them just had uh, tablets. Um, just, just, yeah, just a comment sort of thing from, from me. Uh, there's a question from Sam in the chat there as well. But uh, my son's an uh, electrician. And uh, he he has an iPhone. Well, he's had several iPhones. Um, and what he's done is invested in you know the best, most rugged case he can find. So that now, if he drops his iPhone on site, it basically bounces and doesn't break. So that might be a good suggestion for your students: is invest in a really rugged smartphone uh, case. And they do actually work. It makes them a lot bigger, but it's worth it in the end. Um, so there's a question from Sam there. Do you get reflection yeah. that is deep enough? The 
the deep reflection that you could get from a portfolio, I don't think is ever. Um, I don't think it's ever quite our aim for this particular portfolio because there's, there's such a huge portfolio. So there's no such thing as one. The what we're trying to do with the e-portfolio is get them to record um, tasks and materials, and so that they can demonstrate. I like a unit standard speak, demonstrate knowledge that they understand what those materials are, how they all fit together, and then in the curation of an e-portfolio to put these things in a, in a I guess, a, a chronological order, suddenly means that they have that understanding. Um, there is no great reflective process on, on it. There's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer conversation and discussion, but that's, that's, um, that's as far as it goes. Okay, any other questions from people? I noticed Ben has joined us a little bit late, Ben, but uh, do you have a question for Matt? He does, it's in the chat. No, I don't actually have a question. Oh, I've, been, I've been watching on YouTube Live. I watched the whole thing, I just forgot to okay. join the Hangout. Yeah, now we have the similar thing with the BCT, with just so much volume though that you can iterate, so it starts off being, yes, I made a thing and it was awesome, then I had lunch. <laughs> but then you, you know, they get better at it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's partly it's a learning process, isn't it? It's a, it's a new uh, activity that uh, that the students need to learn, so it does take a while. Okay, any other burning questions? We're almost sort of up with our time, but uh, if there is another question from anyone, um, please feel free to ask it. And of course, you can contact Matt later. Uh, Matt's uh, Twitter address is at heavy rower. So uh, we've been communicating on Twitter earlier today. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, Matt, once again. And it's great to see what you've been doing. Great to see that you've been experimenting with some uh, really interesting tools and something quite innovative uh, with your students. I'm sure they really enjoy it. And I uh, look forward to following how your project sort of uh, progresses from here. Uh, there's a thanks there from Catherine in the chat too. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And we'll catch you all guys, all you guys later. And don't forget to put the 10th of July for our virtual symposium into your calendars. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks.